speed. Now, Google, a lot of folks are saying, may be that stock. After soaring 60% in 2013, the stock seems to have lost its momentum. The tech giant is up only 5% so far this year after reporting disappointing first quarter earnings as pressure mounted on its online ad business. But our next guest says Google's momentum is just about to change, and he's got seven reasons for you to buy the stock. Joining me now is Jeff Reeves, InvestorPlace.com editor. Jeff, I love it, but probably we'll only be able to get through about five of these, but let's do our best. First of all, I have to ask, what do you make of today's rally? Well, broadly, I think that, you know, the, the whole idea that the, the market can't go higher, it continually be pro is proven wrong. I think that investors need to kind of wake up to this reality, that kind of worrying about valuations too much or thinking that the other shoe is going to drop. Like, that really is a defeatist way of, uh, of thinking. There's a lot of people who've sat out the rally since 2009. Uh, and I think, you know, it's not all blue skies ahead, but I think there's a lot of positive momentum going on right now. And I, I don't think we should be too negative. I think we should enjoy it while it lasts. Okay. Now, Google is the stock that has held back. Is You say it's ready to move forward. We should just mention, by the way, that we have some uh, breaking news that it's just about to buy a, uh, one of these streaming services called Songza. Uh, I don't know whether it's not moving the stock after hours one way or the other, uh, but it continues to build up its portfolio. First of all, the last quarter, it was a bad last quarter, no way of getting around it, but already that stock has come back a bit, right? Yeah, I mean, it's actually up, while it's, it's lagged overall since January 1st, it's actually up about 15% since its spring lows. It's outperformed the market since then. Uh, and I think part of the reason is because, yeah, it is kind of tough out there for, for online publishers and advertising like with Google. But, you know, I think investors realize that some of that is already baked in. Its valuation is, is a little bit rich. I mean, it's around 20, 21 for a forward PE, but that's actually not all that bad for tech broadly right, right. now. And it's actually kind of cheap if you consider other, other companies out there. So, um, you know, Google typically has traded for a, a PE that's higher than that. The valuation is fair. I think some of the advertising negativity is, is baked, baked in after earnings. And besides, it's, it's one of these companies where I don't think Wall Street likes to bet against it uh, for long, precisely because of things like this acquisition, because Google does like to look around the corner. Right. It's got 60 billions in cash, right? So we can afford to make big we'll acquisitions like this. We'll talk about the cash in a moment, but, but first let's talk about its mobile domination. It really does dominate the market with its Android, no? Yeah, I mean, 80% of the smartphones that shipped last year had the, the Google Android OS on it. And people like to say, well, Apple makes its money on hardware. Who cares if Google's got the software share? Well, acquisitions uh, like the one that they just made for Songza are a good illustration of how they're trying to, to scale this thing up. Because if you have a streaming radio service, whether it's ad-supported or whether or not you pay a monthly subscription fee to it, if you have 80% of the operating system that's on board with you and you kind of easily plug in your streaming audio service to that, it's a natural progression for revenue growth. It's not going to happen overnight. People need to adopt it and then get that annuity business of continuous renewals. Right. But it, it, it's a good idea for Google. This okay. is the kind of business that you're trying to build. You mentioned the $60 billion in cash. They have an operating cash flow of $18 billion a year. That is a huge amount. What do they do with all the money besides buying this is a thing like the streaming music service they just bought? Well, you know, they have some really ambitious things out there. One that I find the most interesting, they actually have a contact lens that diabetics can wear and it monitors their blood sugar. Really entry level uh, or really cutting edge stuff. It's only in the entry phases right now. It's not, it's not been tested or, or isn't out at scale. But a lot of people look at wearables and they think things like, like Google Glass. It's this wacky thing you wear on your face. But wearables can be much more than that, especially with the aging boomer population and diabetes being what it is in America. That, that, that's really an ambitious thing that they're going after with, with kind of a health business arm. They're Beyond also that, into also the robots, robotics. aren't they, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've met a bunch of robotics acquisitions in the past several months. I mean, again, it's not anything that's, that's going to come yeah. to fruition anytime soon. But Google is thinking about things like human robots that can go in disaster areas and either disarm bombs or they can help with uh, like uh, hurricanes that come through and there's polluted right. waters or god forbid a nuclear meltdown if they have to get into a reactor so these are these are not instant things i do like google in the short term because i think the earnings negativity was a little overdone the valuation is fair but long term i don't think you can discount acquisitions like the one we saw today uh, and these other big picture programs they have like healthcare and, and robot initiatives well if that's not enough for you we're going to put more of jeff's reasons why you should buy into google right now on our website Jeff Reeves, great to see you, Jeff. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thanks, it. Seth.